Hello TSG, I'm Kurt Holfreder and this is going to be your August uh, 20 minute challenge. Um, so this month's focus is going to be focusing on the second intention uh, cutting that we can work into uh, once we open up from the the right Oberhau or the Zorn Ort. Uh, oftentimes you'll find somebody they'll cut at you and they'll pull back into a motion um, that has made them uh, defensive and therefore utilize then your thrust may not be lined in the way that you want it to do. So this right here is exploring a cutting combination that I have found that I have fielded only a few times. I have had found some success in it and maybe not landing the strike but in um, but in being able to ward them back into a position. So this is going to be utilizing the, com the cutting combination of going in from Zorn Ort, I'm oh, sorry, just Zorn How, and then from there, based on the response, moving into the Krump. Um, so I'm going to go through the dynamics of that as well as some of the warm up pieces as well. Uh, just like any other, just like any other um, of our workouts we've done, we have the exercises that we do for warm up pieces, we have the wrist rotations we've done before, do this way as well, shoulder rotations, forward and back. We've already and uh, from there, also getting our feet engaged, moving up and down. We're also going to do air squats in between. Forward lunges. And I'm gonna introduce another thing here, which is gonna be utilized, I call it hip, hip shifters. Uh, and I feel like it's good because it does is it opens up that, that motion that we're going to be working into. It's simply by going your left foot forward, your right foot back, and going. And then switching the other leg. Now, the reason why I want to introduce those is because in most of my videos you've seen before, I do a lot of hip transitioning and those are the, that's how I get a lot of my power from my cutting. So with that being the case, warming that up that right there is going to help out. So that's the piece right there, the first portion that we're going to talk as far as utilizing the, the dynamic warm-up piece for it all. The next thing is, as far as for blade warm-ups, is going to be the same thing. And again, all these warm-ups here, I'm just showing you warm-up so you feel ready. I've been out here for a little bit so I got a good warm-up piece and me already going. So warm-up as you are available. Don't just do 30 seconds of this and think you're good. Um, so the same thing as, as always, people see this all the time, my blade razors. Get that control. Just on the other hand. Again, it's your ability. If you can come all the way up, if you just come right here, or if you have to come here, or if you have to choke up on the thing, uh, up to the half, then come this way. Whatever your ability is, make sure that you work uh, into your arms motion into that piece. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is going into the sword cyclones, which you've seen those before. Forward and then backwards. Switching hands. Forward. That's backwards, I suppose. And then forward. And the last one we're going to do is so kind of a follow-on warm-up from what we've had from last week, which is this. It's my I call it scissor cutting. I'm not sure. This is something I've kind of come along the line with it all, which is here. We're standing in this position, it this way. It's almost you're coming. You're not going to a full crump. Just kind of coming off the extension here to here. Crump, shield, crump, shield. Put your hands. This right here, again, keeping that lead hand center. It does shift, but it's also my body shifting. But it's the rear hand, like in this, that's really doing the cutting. Okay, so 
get your hands warmed up to that piece. That should give a good uh, motion what you need for that. And then we're going to go into the working dynamics of this. So working into this cutting, uh, into this, this challenge right here, like I said, it, it's going to go back down to ergonomics of the handle as well as extending the hands out first. I'm sorry, excuse me, extending the blade out first and make sure that you're not at your hands. Allowing that rear hand to do the guiding, that's really gonna help, especially with the second attention crump. And then most importantly, is using the full body concept. So that's where you get your hips engaged. And allowing your hips to be engaged there means that you have the ability to get your swivel portion going on with it. Or you can actually feel your whole body cutting into it, okay? so. The warm-up dynamic first that we're going to work on this is moving into just doing overhaul, but doing it extremely slow, and then building up. So it's like a five, it's going to go five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. So you're counting down to it, and then you, you go back. So ideally it's going to be like this. So again, left foot forward, right foot back. From here, one, two, three, four, Five, one, two, three, four, five. You can't see from the front, so do from the side here. You can see that my hands are going really slow. And the reason being this is I want to get the mental portion of blade first. So, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So on that one I did five. Do that for suggestions of probably like three or four, three or four uh, executions of that really slow, really controlled. I'm not just putting my arms out lazily. I'm also engaged. My arms are gripped. I'm not over tightening, but I'm feeling it through the entire motion. So my arm is remembering these muscle memory points. So when I do cut, it should extend out exactly as I did it in the slow. So it's not just going, all right, here we go, cutting. No, you're engaged. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Next one, you're gonna go to four and then down. So same concept, you're gonna count this all the way down until you get to one. And then we, once you've done that, by the time you get to one, it should just be one, one, one. One, one, one. And at that point, because you have slowly engaged that cut, you have built up that muscle memory. You do this five times, do it ten times, do it a thousand times, whatever you choose fit on that. However, that five slow count, and then moving to four slow count, and then three slow count, then two slow count, and then one, it should layer upon mind to body and allow you to do that cutting dynamic. So again, for the side cut, once you see from here, from the one, we did this, but then, once you go to the one, it should be this. And notice, again, like, this is why we did those flexors we did in the beginning. Because the cut is gonna come there. So the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the crump, doing the same thing and what that really means to us as far as from this angle. Uh, so we're gonna start up in right foam tog and then we're gonna transition over into that long point and then transitioning up to there. And that's why it's such a compound piece. I feel like this is more than enough right here. I didn't wanna to go too crazy with it all, but this is slow work, building into speed work and then building into dynamic cut work. Uh, so this is the first, so for the crump, as I understand it, so again, other people out there may have a completely different mentality, and that's fine. Share it, please. Uh, it's, I love about this community. It's all about it's about the collective. So again, keeping in mind that the left hand is the hand that does the pulling, the cutting, the whatever. We're going to be going into that. So in this situation, in again, right from tag, and we're going to be executing your crump over. Right. I'm going to come over this side so you can see a little better. Over. Notice again here, hand is center. So I'll put it off to the side, you can see this. It's still in the center of my body. I'm literally just punching this out. The cut comes from the left hand punching up underneath. There. 
So, understanding that we're going to do the same thing we do with Crump as we do with the Zornhow, and we're going to do the five, the five, the slow cut with five to five to one, and then eventually moving up to that one. Again, engage the muscles. You should feel tension as you're going through. It's very slow work, but your body should be engaged. You should feel your muscles working as you cut this way. So, ideally in here, up in that right foam tie. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Transition your foot as you ever see fit. Mine's usually between three and four is when I try to, sometimes a little bit earlier. But it should be the same time as the cut. Remember, we spring to the right. So again, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Again, five to four. So the next one will be four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, then three, two, one, three, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. I'm not gonna demonstrate all that. Do that at your ability and how many repetitions you want. And I've talked to a few people and they'll do 10 repetitions of five and then 10 repetitions of four, whatever you need, however it works for you. I usually try to do a variant between fives in between. So ultimately it should make it look like here. see this hand. Again, notice center of the body. And all I'm doing is punching. It's here. My right hand turns that way because the left hand pulls under. If it helps you out to do it single-handed, that can help you too. And then just guide, guide, okay? So that's crumb pile from the right shoulder. And again, we're doing this very slowly because I want you to build the muscle memory of this. The next piece we're gonna go into is, remember that, that first portion of the Zornor play where I cut, I start extending, and then we're gonna cut across. I'm sorry, well, that's not the Zornor play, but, and you stab him in the face or you cut, perform the abnamen. The reason why I started to work this technique is because my experience is this. Most people perform cut arounds and they're not thinking, oh, I have to protect myself. Well, first person that they typically do is go bink, bink, double cutting around. So that's first cuts here. By pulling the crump, I have walled that spot, that second intention cut. And there's following techniques you can do work there. Spare house, shield house, whatever you want. But the reason why I've done that is because I'm trying to get away from the cut, 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 cut mentality and approach systematically in a way that allows for other, other opp opportunities. So you either come across somebody that they cut once and they cut again. And you're just, you're just cutting for the, heck, for the sake of cutting. Or you come across them that's very defensive. And the moment that you cut in here, they wind back. Well, that's why I developed the crumb pile technique for this portion. For me, and it's not my technique, it's this, this combination, because what defeats ox? The crump. So if they're standing here and left ox, I'm cutting to their hands. First cut here, they don't do anything, and then I just cut to their hands. Or I cut underneath the blade, and I have that thrust. The purpose of this right here is going to be, once again, excavating the two fundamental portions. Zorn Howl, extending into the Oort, and then switching over to Chrome Howl. Okay, so it's simply going like this. First cut, extending, from. First cut, extending, from. So we're going to go slow with this, first getting that crump into play, right? So we've already come here, so just cut one to here, and then what? this is this is the five portion. So one, two, three, four, five, okay? Reset. Here, one, two, three, 
four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And the reason why I'm starting there is because that's how Zorn, the, the Zornard ends. So it ends with that thrust, and depending on what they do off of that, what other opportunities you have. So, the last portion of this is putting it all together in speed. And that's just simply extending it out there. So effectively, again, should be five and then five. So you're gonna count, to, you're gonna count down from five to one and then five to one, just like so. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Counting down progressively, four to one, four to one, I'm sorry, then I'm sorry, four to one, then three to one, then two to one, and then one. Again, your speed should be based upon total body dynamic, which is why as you're feeling this, squeeze, engage, and squeeze, engage. I'm literally going boom and then boom with both those areas as far as my hip flow going in, okay? So, keeping that in mind, however your speed goes, if it's slower, it does not matter. When you get to the one, it should just be employing the entire body. So, one, one. One, one. One, 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 okay? And that's really what it's gonna come down to. So again, this 20 minute challenge is really taking a technique that we have to employ. It's embodying the concept of understanding the four and the knock, and understanding that not everybody is a, is a tactical fighter. And from there, being able to employ a different body dynamic which covers ourselves from the line and opens up another thrust. Again, however you choose to see fit on utilizing this, it's going to benefit you by first allowing yourself to reach your opponent, gauge them, feel them in that four knock, and then exploiting them as far as for what you have to do in there. Okay? So, again, as in anything, and hey, it's the Marine Corps, right? So, if it, if it ain't raining, we ain't training. So, with this being the case, we still have to cool down from this. So, it's a lot of shoulder, a lot of abs, and other reasons right here. So, chest stretching, back stretching, I'm sorry, that was your back stretch, chest stretching, <laughs> then moving into your shoulder stretch, oh that feels good, oh that feels good, same thing, other side, getting your wrist engaged, allowing that stretch, Downward, and upward, and downward, and upward, just like so. Leg stretching. Probably can't tell, but ideally, hips forward, engaging the hip cord. Switching. And now doing the deep lunge where you are effectively keeping that leg, keeping that, that foot on the ground, focusing on our calves and our Achilles. Meaning forward. Same thing. You can go deeper, get your hip flexors, which is good because that's what we've been doing. And that should be it. So again, uh, this 20 minute challenge is really about uh, looking for diversity in cutting. Last, last month was about opportunities in cutting around. If you employed that, now you should be able to slow that down. This is much more trying to get to the concept of a martial mindset of getting there, looking, placing the blade, going to the thrust, and then cutting across. Again, 
No cut works without Fulin. So that's why I did the five to one for the, for the Zorn. And then that's why effectively I do the five, I do the five to the one again with the crump because it's extending the blade. If it's not gonna feel in the crump, you should be feeling in that motion. Feel, feel, feel. If crump doesn't work and an opnamen will, then take that. But you should be able to slow your positioning, understand, and then move as, as your body as you're telling to. And then, of course, utilizing your entire body as well as the ergonomic of the handle. So, again, I'm Kurt Holtfetter. Uh, this is your 20 minute challenge. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Good luck. Good luck on the path. And uh, hope to see you in the ring.